again for another night of YPWW. We pray that God has been good to you, has been blessing you all week long. And let's begin with a word of prayer. God, we thank you for this night. We thank you for this word. We thank you for being a God of grace and a God of mercy. God, we ask that you reveal your word unto us on tonight and give us a mind to apply this lesson to our lives. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And thank God. Amen. So tonight we're on lesson number nine, repentance and the moral life. And the aim of this lesson is to convince the believer that true remorse for making unspiritual decisions is an important feature of the Christian moral life. Amen. And our lesson text will be coming from Deuteronomy 31 through 10. And when we talk about repentance, it's a message that needs to be preached. It's a message that needs to be taught. And us as believers, we all have come to a point where we have failed living this Christian life. But when we fail, God did not throw us away, you know, there, but there was still something that we had to do and that was repent. You know, when we look at our lesson text in Deuteronomy and we study Israel, you know, God chose them to be his people. And, you know, he knew the history of Israel and that was failure. You know, in chapter 29, uh, he invited Israel into a covenant with him, a contract with him, and he wanted them as his people. He promised to be their God, you know, but God knew exactly what he was getting himself into. And God knows the character of every man. He knows about us. He knows when, when we're going to fall. You know, so he knows that we're going to need his grace. We're going to need his mercy. And when God told Adam and Eve not to eat of the tree, uh, of knowledge of good and evil, he knew they were going to do it in, anyway, because he said, in the day that you do eat. So he knew they were going to do it, yet he still showed them mercy. So nothing catches him by surprise, and God knows you. He knows me. You know, he, know, he knew them. You know, so uh, one thing when I'm studying this lesson, when we talk about failure, and when we make unspiritual decisions, like our books say, uh, when it comes to our Christian morality, uh, we must know that God is not happy when we fail. People are happy when you fail, but God's not happy. God ain't sitting there waiting to whoop you or punish you because you fail. But on the flip side, he does not make an excuse for our failure. And we shouldn't make excuses either. You know, but he could, but he don't excuse it because he provided a solution and that was the blood of Jesus. So he can't just wipe or sweep our, uh, un, uh, what do you say? Unspiritual decisions under the rug. You know, when we choose stuff that's outside of the will of God, then he has to punish us. You know, he got to judge us and there's consequences to that. But again, he shows us grace. He shows us mercy and he's not willing to leave us there. You know, when you feel, when, when you fail, some people will always look at you as a failure. They'll want to keep you right there in your uh, mistake. But God don't look at us like that, you know, and he's not limited in his mercy. And when God so, sees us, you know, in our sins, he He saw us in our sins. Let me say it like that. And he made a way where we can be in fellowship with him, right fellowship with him. So the ball is in our court. We always must find our minds to repent. When we go to our lesson text and we'll skip around a little bit in verses three and four, we see that God can bring you back from wherever you have fallen. Uh, the word of the Lord said that then in three and four, it said then that then the Lord thy God will turn to thy captivity and have compassion upon thee and will return and gather thee from all the nations, whether the Lord thy God has scattered thee. If any of thine be driven out unto the outmost parts of heaven, from thence will the Lord thy God gather thee and from thence will he fetch thee. So only God can, you know, do something like that. Only God can bring you back from a uh, complete failure. And our lesson also teaches us, if you go read on to verse 5, that he can restore everything that you have lost. If we come to God and we repent and we ask him for forgiveness, you know, uh, he has the power to restore. He has the power to put us back right where we belong. When you go to 6 and 9, it teaches us how God offers to bless us. And verse 10 shows us how we must obey him. You know, so, you know, when we do a close read about Deuteronomy 31 through 10, it reveals the following about uh, repentance. And this is, you can find this in your book. 
it requires that we admit spiritual deterior uh, deterioration. That means, you know, you can tell you're not where you were. And verse one says, and it came and it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse, which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations, whether the Lord thy God have driven thee. So in order for us to really, truly repent, like our next section says, is it, it takes us to re it requires us that we evaluate our circumstances. You know, repentance or returning to the Lord is possible once we acknowledge that we are not as strong in the Lord as we once were. For us to return to God, we have to admit that we have departed from him. And repentance becomes possible once we realize the state of the affairs in our lives have changed. We have to be attentive to our lives. If stuff starting to go crazy and stuff and you know something ain't right, then we have to check our relationship with God. Check your walk with God. And then once you find out that something is wrong and that fellowship is broken, it requires that we recommit ourselves to God. In verse two, it says, and shall, and shall return unto the Lord thy God and shall obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children with all thine heart and with all thy soul. Amen. So when you know something is wrong, don't hesitate to run back to God, but repent quickly. Get things right with God. And it requires that we anticipate our future. And this is verse 9. Verse 9 says, And the Lord thy God will make thee plenteous in every work of thine hand, in the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy cattle, in the fruit of thy land, for good, and for the Lord will again rejoice over thee for good, as he rejoiced over thy fathers. So, you know, when we anticipate the outcome, repentance, we know it will do it fast. We know if we don't get it right, then, you know, hell is your home. You got to continue to live in punishment and judgment. So when we repent, we position ourselves to receive from the Lord, receive great things from God. And God has high hopes for us. He He desires that we live holy and prosperous. You know, so when we surrender our lives to God, that's when repentance becomes possible. And backsliding happens when we don't recognize that we are out of the will of God and we continue to do things like normal, but normal ain't always good. We got to realize and keep our minds so focused on God. What we know if we're outside of the will of God, then we need to repent. And we need to get right with God. And when we anticipate the outcome and we return to God, you know, uh, Jeremiah, our book talks about Jeremiah and the wishes that the Lord has for his people in Jeremiah 29 and 11. And when God, God opens up our eyes to see things, he allows things to happen so you can get that right. He don't want us to wallow in our sin, wallow in our failures, but he's made a way where we can get things right. We can repent and we can be in right fellowship with God. And for us as saints, for us as believers, you know, when we fail, God, it, it, it you know, it hurts. You know, it hurts because we live every day wanting to please him. And every mistake that I've made, that you've made, has been a decision that we made outside of the will of God. And that's what we don't want. We want to continue to seek God's face. We want to continue to know what he wants, know his direction. In Second Peter 3 and 9, the word of the Lord says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness. But it's long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. So God wants all of us to go to heaven. He loves us and he's made a way where we can make it. But we can't live in self-denial. We can't live gassing ourselves up, making ourselves believe that everything is peaches and cream when they're not. We know when we're outside of the will of God. So therefore, we must find ourselves repenting, asking God to forgive us sincerely and turning away from our sins, turning away from that mistake, not making it again, not willfully sinning, not willfully disobeying the word of God. Amen. So we thank you for joining us for this brief summary of the YPWW lesson. I kind of just, this, uh, the lesson about repentance is so broad. So I kind of just wanted to focus on some main points of this lesson on tonight. Hope it helps you as you kickstart your study or session as you study with your family, friends, loved ones, or your YPWW group. Amen. And we're going to leave you with question number two from our books on tonight. What are some clues that we have yielded ourselves 
to God. Amen. What are some clues that we have yielded ourselves to God? Amen. And I want to thank God for you joining us on tonight. We are the Bethel Church of God in Christ, Plain Dean of Louisiana. Thank God for our pastor, Pastor Donald Douglas, our first lady, first lady Douglas, to my own wife, to all of you subscribers, to all of the saints of God. Amen. We thank God for you. And let's end with a word of prayer. God, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for making a way where we can repent and get things right with you. And God, tonight we pray a special prayer, God, for everyone that comes across this video, God, even me, even the all the saints of God, we pray that you forgive us, God, for anything we said, done, or thought that wasn't like you. God, we pray for each and one, each one of the people that come across the video. You know where their request, you know what they need. We pray that you meet them at the point of their needs, God. We give you glory, honor, and praise for who you are in our lives. When we ask that you order our steps from this point on, that you help us to make the right decisions. We give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. And thank God. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. And we'll see you next week for YPWW. Amen. God bless you.